before the Battle of Libya dissolved itself into the Battle of Egypt, work on the El Alamein line was pressed forward. Giant excavators were set to work scooping up the desert sand as the fortified positions were strengthened to call a halt to Rommel's advance. El Alamein, 65 miles from Alexandria, became the focal point of resistance. West of it, the sorely pressed divisions of our 8th Army, under cover of stubborn rearguard actions, were filtering back. These were men of the gallant 50th, who, by a daring maneuver, fought their way back through the enemy lines and arrived at their rendezvous practically intact. And here is the man upon whom all eyes are turned at this critical period in the Middle East. General Auchinleck assumed command of the 8th Army, taking up his quarters in a mobile office personally to direct operations. With stubborn and resolute determination to come out fighting for the next round, his men set to work with stout hearts to prepare for the approaching clash of arms. Under a blazing Egyptian sun, they toiled, making ready for the Battle of El Alamein. Here now is some idea of the strength of our supply columns moving on to new positions. All that we had lost had to be made good and more. By splendid cooperation, the RAF sees to it that the enemy does not get the opportunity of interfering with such movements. All the time, fighters and patrol planes zoom overhead, sometimes barely skimming the tops of the lorries, while high in the skies, squadrons are flying to intercept enemy planes that may be hiding in the clouds. Two-way traffic is maintained as our transport columns feed El Alamein with weapons and supplies for the coming efforts. The Air Force quickly made its plan to give air protection along the route the columns are to take. This is no small task when practically every available aircraft in the desert is constantly kept busy dealing blows at the enemy behind his lines. All praise to the motor transport drivers who tackle the dangerous narrow roads and desert tracks to reach their objective. By road and rail pause the strength of British and American factories to be flung into the new battles on the outcome of which so very much depends.